Hey, Shalom on my I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem El Shai, by Hashem Kakadash. Double, double honors to the apostles and others and great most soon for teaching us truth and for ruling well. And peace and temptation to all you I came out there pushing and the finances gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. As well as to the believers in Yahweh, by Hashem El Shai, the men as well as the women, the hopeful elect. This is the brother Kahana La from the GMS Hawaii. And I want to do a quick lesson, or wouldn't it be edifying? I'm inspired by, you know, some, uh, well, ultimately a conversation I was having with this individual. And, uh, you know, I pretty much asked him, because we were talking about, you know, the world problems and, you know, just conflict that is going on, the whole A, B, C, D, everything agenda and things that ESO is trying to push upon the world I mean there was somebody in the world but you know I I came to to the question of what would you do if you were given power over the world how would you change the course that the world is is in right now you know and I asked them would you would you uh do it through politics would you you know execute people what what would you do to to change the ways of the world you know and at first you know they kind of didn't have an answer and i kind of like sh chimed in a little bit and i was like well you know if if i was put into power i would pretty much you know give a chance to Whoever did evil to to step down for him from uh, from their power seat and you know surrender everything they they took unlawfully and you know did and, and pay a pay for for their crimes you know and if not then pretty much just execute all, all the ones that are in power you know I mean ultimately we know how Yahweh Shemel Shai is gonna deal with Esau. And those that are in charge of the world, but speaking to somebody in the world, you kind of had to, you know, make it nice, smooth, smooth it out for them a little bit because, you know, they're, they're in the world. So uh, she she was like, oh, well, you know, I kind of see your point. And, you know, there is certain problems that, you know, the world is facing that pretty much we can't fix unless we get rid of those people but at the same time you know i feel like you have to have you know you have to be uh, i don't recall if she said fair or, or compassionate i don't remember exactly the words she used but pretty much uh, she was like you know you, you can't just be you know getting rid of people and whatever because then you become evil the evil person you know so that's what inspired first and foremost uh this lesson and uh i just wanted to touch on it real quick because it was uh, in my spirit to do so and uh you know ultimately we as believers of yahweh Shai, we know that there's only two two sides to the coin man and it's either you're with Yahweh Shai and with uh, righteousness, or you're on the side of evil, man. You know, you're on the side of disobedience, of uh, acceptance, because all, all that acceptance comes with is wickedness. You know, I did a a lesson, you know. Probably last week talk, Talking about that How acceptance of wickedness is Is evil But ultimately You know That's All there is You're either on On the side of good Which is with Yahweh Bashim Or you're on the side of evil Which is with Within the heathens Idolatry You know uh, All the Everything that is outside of the tabernacle Of the Most High You know And this is why Yahweh Shai himself here in Matthew 12 and 30 said this He said He that is not with me is against me And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad 
That's right. And the reason why was because Yahweh Shai came to what? To, to, to preach. First and foremost, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh, uh, to our people, to preach uh, repentance to our people. And also to what? To condemn those of our people that were doing evil. To condemn the, the, the ways of this world, you know, which were being followed after our people, man. And then after his death, he gave um, visions to the prophets to show us how the Lord was going to fix this uh, this world that's being spearheaded by wickedness right now. You know, since since the time of the beginning, the world has been in a in a decline. You know, if we look at the times of, you know, of, of Adam, uh, before they they took of that tree of, of knowledge of good and evil, you know, the, the world was paradise, man. And since they took of that fruit, uh, it's been on a decline and wickedness has just increased and increased more and more. And in the times we're living in now, Wickedness is completely ruling the, the, the entire earth. The scriptures say that wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And we're living in the most corrupt, most evil, most wicked uh, generation to ever exist, man. So he showed the prophets of old what what the solution uh, to this problem was and, and and it was to what to pretty much destroy uh the evil which is in the ruling seat to bring them down and to what and to set up a new kingdom with new rulers under righteousness and those rulers were gonna be who the first and foremost the elect of the nation of Israel who who believed, who changed their ways and uh and uh stood stiffly for Yahweh Bashima Oshai and for righteousness, those are gonna be the ones, you know, spearheading uh, the, the the new world in righteousness. And also the rest of the nation of Israel. That's how he was gonna fix the problem. And the thing with people nowadays is that they don't they they've been given this world that has so many options in wickedness that in some way or another their wicked deeds their wicked actions are being fulfilled are being uh fueled by whatever philosophy whatever way of of death it is that they're following so when you speak to them about, look, the only way to solve this is to bring severe rules and severe consequences to change the minds of the people, then they they immediately think of the things that they do wrong, and it's like, oh shit, nah, I don't want I don't want to change my ways, so let's just try to work something out. I think maybe maybe we could find something, maybe we could find the solution, you know. So to them that the thought of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai or anybody as a matter of fact, because the example I put upon them was if you were the leader of the entire world, how would you fix the problem? You know, so it doesn't matter if it's a divine force or a, a, a human executing that judgment, that harsh judgment. They don't want to accept it. Because to them it's like, nah, we need some evil, you know? They're not with certain big evils, but then they're with a lot of smaller evils, you know? And that's not how the Lord works, man. There's no gray areas with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh It's either you're good or you are bad. That's why, again, right here in Matthew 12 and 30, it says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad and our people have adapted that mindset of well we need gray areas you need a little good a little evil to to 
to live pretty much. You know, I remember one of my cousins came from Colombia and uh, he was telling me how in Colombia people have this mindset of like, well, we need we need the wicked people so that we could we need corruption and, and evil people so that we can all survive. You see? And that's the mindset that the whole entire world from the bottom class, the poor class to the rich have adopted, man. You go into talk to a successful businessman, and all of them have have committed some sort of, you know, a, a wicked business. You know, talk to an athlete, talk to anybody, man, and some way somehow they've done some some wickedness, some mischief, man, amongst their own brethren and their families. Some way somehow, you know. And that's why the Lord came to what? To shine light upon the world and show us pretty much good and evil, man. And to, to show us what the consequences of evil were. Because we were blinded to it, man. People always looked at the world. I myself looked at the world and we were just like, oh, yeah, that's just how the world is. And whatever. Let's, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Let's do whatever it is to that, that makes us fit in and be happy and be successful but in this world, you have to be evil and wicked to do so. And then consequences come behind them. And nobody understood, really, until the Lord put the spirit upon us and the understanding. And it's because why? Because you do evil things, wicked things. You break the law, statutes, and commandments. There's consequences behind them. And those consequences is what? This, the, the, the environment we're living in, the world we live in now... Are the consequences of not following after righteousness, man. So now he's showing us what it's going to be like. And he gives us a glimpse of, of those things when we're amongst brothers. Of how the kingdom is going to be. How, how much love there's going to be amongst one another. How much order and respect there's going to be amongst ourselves. And even leadership. Because brothers have positions of leadership. Amongst the camps, amongst, you know, uh, amongst their jobs. And they, you know, order, you know, people in their jobs to do certain things. And they don't do it like Esau do it. They do it with, with, with a certain way that people are, like, drawn to it. Like, damn, this guy's my boss, but he got something about him. He's respectful. He's, you know, he, he does it in a certain way that I don't mind doing things for this dude. You know? And that's... The Lord showing us like, look, I'm going to give you something way better than anybody can imagine, even yourselves, you know. But right now, we are experiencing it in, in, in very tiny little bit amounts. And that's why we we keep pushing the word. But, you know, nevertheless, not not to stray away from that, you know. You, you either on the good team or on the bad team. And those that want to cleave unto the evil, man, you're going to be destroyed right along with it. And those that change to the good, guess what? The Lord's going to have mercy, Lord willing, you be part of that number and establish us <clears throat> in, the, in the new kingdom as, you know, heads of, hey, depending on, on, on what your lot is, of, of worlds, of countries, of continents, cities, towns, you know? So this is Ecclesiasticus 33 and 14. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So you can't have a world, if you want peace, if you want harmony, if you want order, you can't have evil rulers or you can't have good rulers uh, ruling in a in a in an evil world. This is what's happening right now. Esau, the wicked, is ruling, so he's not gonna let no no one righteous, no one good, rule beside him or rule underneath him. And the same thing in the kingdom of Yahweh Shemah was shot. It's gonna be a perfect kingdom in in righteousness, a good kingdom. So we cannot have uh, uh, evil unrighteous rulers amongst us man 
So what's going to have to happen with those rulers and those evil, you know, uh, individuals? They're going to have to be blotted out, man. And that's what the scriptures is speaking about. The Lord's going to come to establish his kingdom. But guess what? They're not going to give up their kingdom easily. So the only way that the Lord's going to do it is through what? Through through war. The, the Heavenly Father is going to wage war through his son, Yahweh Shai, against these nations, man. Especially against the nation of Edom. And that's how the, the problems of the world are going to be solved, man. The, the, the wickedness, the perversions, you know. Uh, it says, so look upon the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one against another. That's right, man. So you see, th this, this problem that we have in the world is what? It's one, the consequences of, of us sinning. And the world being given unto the heathens. And two, or Esau, which is the wicked, being let loose with, with power over the world. You see, and it's only going to be resolved through Yahweh Shai coming here and waging war and destroying him and his, and his infrastructure. So, hey, I just wanted to do a quick lesson on that. Lord willing, it was edifying. Again, all praises, honor, and glory going to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rekakadash. Till next time, Lord willing, hey, shalom.